Hi. Do you remember in school when we learned about the water cycle, how water evaporates then falls again as rain? But there was always a lingering question in my mind, how did water first form on our planet in the first place? As the years have passed, physicists have been able to answer this question. One in particular, Carl Sagan, asserted that water first arrived on our planet when stars first appeared. Stars aren't simply shiny things that twinkle in the night. Inside stars, a series of nuclear burning stages transform the star into an onion-like shell structure that produces heavier and heavier elements in its various stages. Elements like silicon, neon, calcium, copper, chromium, carbon, oxygen, the list goes on and on, and this causes the star to expand more and more. The last element to be produced by the star, the one that sits in the very core of the star, is iron, which makes the star resist any further compression and lose its ability to expand. The star then becomes a bloated ball of gas with a dense iron core, slightly similar to the size of planet Earth, resting at the very centre. No more energy can be produced by the iron core because iron doesn't burn. This causes the star's store of energy to become depleted, and it is this process that spells the end for the star. The end of a supermassive star results in an explosion, a supernova. After the star explodes in a supernova, it leaves behind its core as a remnant. The core of this remnant is more rigid than steel. This remnant is the densest star known to exist in the universe. It's called a neutron star or a pulsar. This pulsar is characterized by unique characteristics. First, it's very dense. How dense? Let's put it this way. A teaspoon of matter from a neutron star or pulsar weighs as much as Mount Everest. Secondly, it punches holes in stellar disks. In NASA's Chandra X Observatory, scientists have observed a pulsar punching a hole in a disk of gas or stellar disk around its companion star. They published this information along with an image of the pulsar on their website on July the 23rd, 2015. In the form of stardust, supernovas scatter the elements that surround the core of the star and that are made through nuclear fusion by the star out into the cosmos. And these are the same elements that make up other stars, planets and everything on Earth, including our bodies. In her research work published in 2014 in the Astrophysical Journal, Goranka Bilalbegovic and her research team described exploding stars as cosmic cement mixers in order to explain the presence of building material in space. They recorded that when the very massive stars die, they explode and litter space with a variety of elements. All the ingredients of cement have been found in such stellar remnants, meaning that stardust is not just dust, it is cement-like dust which solidifies after being mixed with water. The oxygen synthesized in stars via nuclear reactions is dispersed with the stardust through the cosmos and combines for the first time with hydrogen to form water, H2O. And here lies the answer to the question I posed at the beginning. Where does water really come from? Water was formed and emerged for the first time from between the cement-like dust and the remnant star core, which is more rigid than steel, the pulsar meaning that the dust grains that float through the solar system contain tiny pockets of water and water has been found trapped inside real stardust. Scientists believe that this stardust rained down continuously on young planet Earth and brought with it the organic material needed for the eventual origins of life. The discovery of water in stardust suggests that the continuous stardust falls have acted as a continuous rainfall which brought water to our molten planet. In the Quranic chapter called Altarek, or the Pulsar, God swears by the star which punches holes that we are made from the showers of water, the water which emerged from between kinds of cement like dust and steel. The Holy Quran says, by the heaven and by the Pulsar, and have you understood what the Pulsar is? It is the star which punches holes. There is not a soul that does not have a guardian over it, so man must consider it from what he has been created. It was created from the water ejected, that is emerging from between the steel and cement-like dust. God has all power to resurrect him. It's beyond incredible that a book from 1400 years ago would mention such topics. So when the famous physicist Carl Sagan said, we are all made of star stuff, he wasn't speaking poetically or figuratively, he meant it literally. But before Carl Sagan's and his great-great-grandfathers were even born, the Quran had already told us that showers brought the elements that make up everything on earth, including our bodies, when it says, 
Have you not seen that God has sent water down from the heaven to make fruits of various colours, mountains of various colours like white, red and intense black mountains, and also to make the various colours of people, moving creatures and grazing livestock? In 2004, NASA sent a spacecraft called Stardust on a mission to collect cosmic dust samples from a comet to be brought back to Earth for analysis. Andrew Westphal, a planetary scientist and the study lead of this mission, said, by analysing interstellar dust, we can understand our own origins. Mr Westphal was right. The analysis of the cosmic dust collected yielded some informative and sometimes puzzling results about the physical characteristics of stardust, other than the fact that it is similar to cement. They found that it is sticky, covered in organic matter, as stated by Dr William Revel, the Emeritus Professor of Biochemistry at University College Cork in Ireland. It is soft, amorphous, not crystalline silicates, as stated by Dr Francisca Kemper in 2004 in the Astrophysics Journal. And it is dark, tar-like, as stated by Drs. Franz R. Kruger and Jochen Kissel at the Max Planck Institute in Munich, Germany. It was also described as similar to cement by Goranka Bilabegovic in the Astrophysical Journal in 2014. But you know where else we can look to learn a great deal about our origins? The Quran. Not only does the Quran state that humans were originally created from dust, but it also states the physical characteristics of this dust in the following verses, and they are strikingly similar to what the scientists described later. Other than its similarity to cement, the Quran describes the dust that we are created from as sticky, soft, and dark, or tar-like. Chapter 30, verse 20. And of his signs is that he created you from dust. Chapter 37, verse 11, Indeed, we created men from sticky clay. And chapter 15, verses 26, And indeed, we created man from potter's clay of altered black smooth mud. <laughs>